Hello and welcome to Lesson 32, The Chain Rule. So this is uh, getting close to one of the last rules that we have out there. Um, so what's today's goal? I can identify when it's necessary to apply the chain rule. So again, I'm looking at <coughs> excuse me, the ability to identify, and then I want you to be able to successfully take the derivative using the chain rule. So those are two goals. When do you use it and when or how do you use it? So this is what you have in front of you already, the note. How do you take the derivative of 2x cubed plus 1 to the fifth? So if you look at it, there's a couple of components here. There is the function inside, and then there is the exponent outside. So this is not a power rule, uh, because what we have is a power of powers rule. So if you want to use the power rule, you would have to expand this out. So you'd have to expand it out. 2x cubed plus 1, 2x cubed plus 1, dot, 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 dot. And then you'd have to FOIL it, or distributive law collect like terms, blah, blah, blah. Huge and very, very tough to do. So we have to come up with a rule to deal with that. So what are we going to do? What we're going to do is we're going to take the original function f of x. All right, so I'm going to say f of x is this, a fun this function. Whatever's inside the brackets, so the 2x cubed plus 1, I'm going to let it equal u. Okay, arbitrarily, I'm picking u. All right. So now we have a function. What it becomes is f of x equals u to the fifth. All right. So when we take the derivative of this function, it becomes just a straight power rule. 5u to the fourth. Now the problem is we're taking the derivative. I'm going to go off to the side here for a second. All right, if I go to Leibniz notation, all right, so really I have y equals u to the fifth. I'm taking the derivative with respect to x. Okay, so I'm taking the derivative with respect to x. So whatever I take the derivative of, whatever variable, it's with respect to x. So it is 5u to the fourth. However, I have to indicate I took the derivative of u with respect to x. Okay, if it was x to the fifth instead, then we'd be taking the derivative of dx over dx. And right now, grade 12 level, you're going to say, oh, those cancel. It's 1. OK, they don't technically cancel. What it says is that x is changing at the same rate that x is changing. So the unit rate here turns out to be 1. But don't think that they just cancel out. Um, it'll get you through, but it's going to hurt you in terms of understanding when you go to university. And I can clarify that in class. So anyway, this is very, very important. So I just took the derivative of a function but I was using a different variable. So that means over here, I have to say du by dx. Now, for those that aren't comfortable with du by dx, du, it, when you take the derivative, it's just prime, right? So u prime. So I have to indicate that I just took a derivative of a variable not of the same type. So I'm dealing with x in my function. I took the derivative of u, which you can do, but I have to indicate, hey, I took the derivative of u with respect to x, so this du by dx. So to finish this up, I need to know what u prime is because I know that 5u to the fourth is multiplying u prime, and I find u prime from up top. I know this is the u function, so the derivative of u, u or u prime is equal to 6x squared. So I can use that in order to substitute in for that. So now I end up with 6x squared. And my final step is, I don't want u in this at all, so let's get rid of u. And I know what u is, because that's what I originally substituted in. So I end up with an expression that is 5 bracket 2x cubed plus 1 to the fourth multiplied by 6x squared. So let's take a look at what that really ha would happen there. The original function. So I'm looking up here. Here's my original function. What happened? The 5, the exponent, became a coefficient. 2x, plus, 2x cubed plus 1 remained the same inside the bracket. And that exponent dropped to a 4. 
So we did apply the power rule to the set of brackets. Where did the 6x squared come from? 6x squared is the derivative of what was inside the brackets. So it's just the 2x cubed plus 1, the derivative of that is the 6x squared. So that is your power rule. All right. Leibniz notation, the derivative of a function is equal to the derivative of the whole function with respect to, or the derivative of x with respect to u. Oops, that's probably deal with that upside down. Sorry, d. Oops, du by dx. Sorry, derivative of the function multiplied by dx by du. All right, so there's the Leibniz notation. So it's the original derivative of the outside function, the outer shell, the outer function, the derivative of inner function. Now, that's how I was taught, and I have a hard time wrapping my head around it at that, at that stage where you are right now. So this is how I approach it, so it's a little easier for you to follow. So it shouldn't say pro product rule, of course. It should say our power rule. Sorry, the chain rule. So chain rule is like an onion. There are many layers. Okay. So if you want to reach the middle of the onion, you have to peel away the layers. So here we go. And this is how I always explain it, or I actually still think of it this way, even though it's a little bit of a, a Shrekish interpretation, if you will. So what do you do first? you take away the outer layer. My outer layer is, oops, is the brackets. So I'm pretending that 2x, 2 minus x cubed isn't there. I'm just going to take the bracket of something to the 50th. So f prime of x equals 50, whatever's in the brackets, to the exponent 49. Now I've got to write in what is in the brackets. So there we go. So now I'm going to take the black pen. I don't know whether you really want to do this with yours, but I got rid of that outer layer of onion. So that's been cut off, and I cut that off, and threw it in the composter. So that's all that's left now is 2 minus x cubed. I need to take the bracket of the inner layer of my onion. So the derivative of 2 minus x cubed is just negative 3x squared. And that's it. So you strip away the outer layers. You, work, you start outside and work your way in. All right, and yes, you can simplify, but I'm, again, unit three, I'm just marking the process itself. So g of x, g prime of x is equal to my outer layer. So I bring the six down to the exponent five. So I took the bracket of whatever's inside, one minus the x squared. So now I have stripped away the outer layer of the onion. It's gone. And now I take the derivative of what's left inside. So it would be negative 2x. Derivative of 1 is 0, of course. And there we go. All right. So I use that onion notation to help me move my way in. So what happens when we get examples like this? First thing I'm going to do with the h of x, I'm going to rewrite h of x, but I'm going to get rid of that uh, radical form. Make it to the 1 half. Make it something that's a little bit easier to work with. So. Taking the derivative, once I take the derivative here, I take the derivative of the brackets. So 1 half of that bracketed mess to the negative 1 half. What's inside has to stay the same. Can't change it. So I've stripped away the outer layer of the onion. Now I multiply by what's inside that, or what's the next layer. And here it's going to be 6 minus 16x. So there's that inner layer. All right. And again, I'm only marking process, so that's as far as you take it. There's some simplification involved, and we'll talk about that in Unit 4. All right. Here we have our quotient rule. The quotient rule and chain rule can be used in combination here. So m of x equals, and actually I'm going to use my space down a little bit further here. So m prime of x equals, just so I have more space, derivative of the top function, which would be 2, multiplied by the denominator, bracket 2 plus 
square root of 3x squared minus 4 minus the top function, 2x, multiplied by its derivative. So I'm just going to use the extra space. So you peel away the layers. So you start with the outer layer. So my outer layer, again, just so you see where I am, is these brackets. Now there's no exponent, so I can take the derivative of what's inside the brackets. So the derivative of 2 is 0 plus the derivative of what's inside the radical sign. So now I'm on to the radical sign. So the derivative of that would be 1 half, whatever's inside, 3x squared minus 4 to the negative 1 half. So if I start getting rid of stuff, I took the, got rid of the brackets, I took the derivative of 2, that's gone, and I just took the derivative of the radical sign, so that's gone. Now I have to take the derivative of what's inside, so that's the 6x. And yes, it's multiplication. Each turn, you just keep multiplying and multiplying. All right, all divided by the denominator squared, 2 plus 3x squared minus 4 squared. And there you go. So there is the first step taken care of. So it can be put inside the chain rule, can go inside the power rule, it can go inside the quotient rule, any of the rules we've talked about, it can be applied. All right, so here is a multi-layered question. So the first thing is to get rid of the radicals. So n of x equals x plus, and then the x minus 1 is to the 1 half, and then the whole thing is to the 1 half. So I just got rid of the radical signs, taking the derivative, n prime of x, start on the outside. So I'm going to take the derivative of the outer layer. So that would be 1 half bracket the exponent negative 1 half. And then whatever's inside stays the same. So what have I done? I have now taken the, got rid of this, so I've stripped away that outer layer. Now, I multiply by the derivative of what's inside. So the derivative of x is 1 plus, now I'm working on this guy right there. The 1 half would come down of whatever's in the middle to the negative 1 half. Now I've got to put that x minus 1 in, closing bracket. So now I took the derivative of x, I got rid of the 1 half, I took the derivative of that, so that bracket's gone. So what's the derivative of x minus 1? It's just 1. And there's your answer. All right. Don't need to simplify at this stage. I just want that first step. Okay. So some of these I'm going to have to check because uh, the back of the book probably does a little bit more simplification. Here's the assigned homework for this section. And this is going to be a little bit more challenging. It's probably going to be the first challenge on taking derivatives that you've had in a while. So uh, if you have questions or frustrations, please make sure you make notes of it and then ask me in class and we'll simplify or I'll help you out and make sure you're on track. All right. Good luck and we'll talk to you later.